Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sipski, your host. Today I'll be talking about my favorite topic, drone and the new Canadian drone laws that will be implemented on June the 1st, 2019. Now I'm supposed to talk about upgrading laptops, uh, upgrading the RAM and the hard drive to SSD. I was supposed to talk about to, uh, this week, but I'm going to po postpone that till next week, okay? Because I think this is quite interesting and I'll uh, give you my take on it. So what do I think of this new Canadian drone laws? I like it. It's good. I'll give you my uh, pros, cons, and the twist. Okay. So let's talk about the pros first. Why do I like this uh, new drone laws? Well, I was worried, you know, before they implemented this new drone law, like, oh man, I hope they don't put insurance on these uh, drones because look at this. This is a tiny drones, uh, DJI Spark. I rarely fly them. I fly them maybe three, four times a, a month, and only during spring and summer I do that. It's not like I do it in the winter time. I know for winter time these uh, drones will not fly well, especially when it's really cold, uh, minus five degrees or colder. This drone is not safe to fly in the winter time because the battery will freeze and then it will fall off from the sky. You do not want to do that. Okay, so that means that only about up, uh, I guess six to. Uh, nine months of the year uh, you can fly your drones and uh, if you fly only three times a month that's about 18 to 25 times you know 24 times in a, a year that's me that's so little to justify paying like 40 to 100 uh, dollars a month now they, we don't even know how much uh, uh, insurance will charge for these type of drones there's actually no company out there that will, uh, you know, insure this drone for less than $40. So we don't really know how much it will cost. And that's the problem. So even you pay $40 a month, I think that's quite expensive if you're flying only a couple uh, times a month. So it's like me, I'm like, so I was worried. I end up selling uh, my DJI uh, Mavic Pro, my Phantom 4 Pro, even my big drone, the S1000, I sold that off. And, and the reason, one of the reasons, of course, was the insurance I was worried about. I sold it off. Now, somebody asked me, Am I, do I regret now that the new drone law is in place, that I sold my Mavic Pro? I actually say no, because you know what? I sold my Mavic Pro, and now if this new drone law come into place, I now can buy the Mavic Pro 2 be, because they have a bigger sensor, so it's like one inch sensor, and now I can do a better uh, job in doing a, a you know nicer cinematic film because having one inch sensor means that I can film uh, in the evening you know and, and uh, there the, it can highness the light so night shot would be amazing okay so having no insurance number one very good number two you can fly over buildings Yes, and you can fly over, I guess you could fly over cars, but here's the law. It didn't mention anything about that. It just mentioned that you cannot fly over bystanders uh, closer than 30 meters. So bystander meaning anyone who is not operating the drone. So crowd, people, right? You can fly over animal, no problem, but people in general, you cannot fly over more than closer than uh, 30 meters. Now, I, I'm not sure about like a person driving a car, 30 meters, so that wasn't mentioned. So I suspect that you can still fly over, you know, cars and buildings, but you can't fly higher than uh, 400 feet or 122 meters, okay? So the, the, the highest you can fly is about 400 feet, but just make sure, you know, you gotta be smart about it, right? Just because it didn't mention there, you don't fly close to the car like that. That's just, that's just nonsense. You know, if, they, if somebody actually get injured because somebody fly close to a car, like within, let's say 20 feet, uh, height and then right close to it that that's just not re not very I, I think that that's that person the drone should be taken away that's just not right okay so you still have to be safe about it even though it's not written in a in in, in, in a drone laws okay what they did was that you can fly within um, 30 meter which I think is acceptable for people you know you know if I was a guy who's standing there and somebody's flying over drone I don't want them to fly over my head and in case that thing actually lose control and hit me right that's not acceptable so I, I like that, that's great. So still, uh, you can fly over people only within 30 meter, okay, as close, the closest you can get. And then you can fly over building, no problem, over the building, 
over the car, over the trees, over the animals, everything except people, 30 meter, okay, in terms of diameter. I mean, sorry, in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, I guess in, in diameter, right? If this is the point of oh, bystander and this is 30 meter in the circle, there we go, 30 meter, okay? The third, and I think the, probably one of the most important uh, uh, issue uh, that I had before and I was like hesitating to want to get a drone is that can I use it commercially like for example posting my YouTube videos getting paid for it making short film getting paid for it well the new drone laws allow you to do that so now you can fly commercially without any issue awesome this is why you want a drone now okay so now I can make short films you can make YouTube videos and there is no law against that Okay, so there's no differentiation between personal use and commercial use anymore. That's awesome. So go get your drone. Okay, amazing. Now, what about the con? Ooh, the con, not so great. The con is this, you have to write a test. Yes. And here's the thing though, the test is actually quite hard. Um, you can check uh, different YouTube uh, videos and People who wrote the test will tell you it's not an easy test. There was one guy who was a, actually a drone instructor. He actually only got 75%. And, and the thing is, the, the passing mark is 65. So he's only like 10% from failing. And, and, the, and the problem is that he's been flying drone for a long time and he's actually an instructor. So that tells you how hard the test is. And when he was describing you know, the type of question, it was actually someone who was an experienced pilot would know the answer to. So if you're an experienced pilot, you just go over the document you know, a couple hours and you probably can pass it, no problem. But people like me who, are, who are, you know, have no knowledge about nautical miles, aviation, weather system, whatever, that kind of related knowledge, you know, most people wouldn't know that. They would actually vigorously prepare and study for these tests. It's not gonna be easy. And, and here's another problem. There's no guidelines to these tests. So you, how can you prepare for something you don't know what you to prepare for? Well, thank goodness there are some YouTubers that actually uh, make a uh, test, like a kind of a guideline. You can check them out. I'll provide a link below. You can check them out. They're pretty good. Thank, thank you for them for making it possible for some of us who want to write tests. So I might have to go and look at their videos and set their suggestion on how to prepare for these tests. So it's great. So that, that is the con, right? You have to write a test and uh, it's not easy tests okay so if it's just for if you're thinking of flying for for hobbies you know for fun forget it i don't think you uh, want to write these tests because it requires for you to you know, to study hard to, to to pass okay so go for a drone that is less than 250 grams or 250 grams or less and then you don't have to worry about these uh laws you're you'll be exempted from that now that brings me to the final twist so if you have a drone uh, that is 250 grams or less, then these laws does not apply to you. You are exempted, right? For example, let's say you own Tello, the very small drone. Um, I think it weighs less than 200 grams and uh, it costs $150 Canadian or less. You can fly those, no problem. It has a camera that's like uh, 720p, it's HD quality. Not that great, but it's good enough, right? So. You, then you, you're, you'll be exempted from that. Now this DJI Spark weighing over 300 grams will be affected. So I'm thinking maybe in the next, I don't know when yet, when I do do it, I'm gonna mod this drone to make it less than, or 250 grams or less, so I can fly it uh, closer than uh, 30 meters and that it will be exempted from this uh, regulation. So look out for that video. I'm not sure I don't want to destroy this drone, but if I do do it, um, I'll let you know, okay? So if I'm able to f uh, make this drone less than 250, that means these, these drone, this drone here, will be exempted from, you know, the regulation, the new drone law regulation. And uh, because it has a very good camera, 1080p, this is perfect for family uh, photos and videos that I can do and it can get very close to my family. Now, I would suggest that you know, you still have to be uh, diligent and uh, be safe about these. Even though it's a, it may be tiny and maybe light, you still have to think of it as, um, you know, a, a, a dangerous um, vehicles, right? If it hit in certain 
because the propeller is quite powerful you don't want to you can still get injured by this you know get cuts and all that so you still have to be safe about it all right so i'll do that next next time i'll i don't know when yet when i do have the time i will mod this to make it less than 250 and i'll let you see it okay thanks for watching educatetube.com so next time we'll talk about how to uh upgrade your laptop uh upgrade the ram and upgrade the uh the hard drive See you.